Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but it's time. Damasi and Michael just talking tech. The following podcast on the Your Own Pay Podcast Network will contain adult content. Listener discretion is advised. More information about this episode can be found at yourownpay.com. All righty, we should have marked it up and we will play around with this. Man, the more I use Reaper, the more confident I get with it. Yeah. And that's really anything right now, because I was playing with Flexible Web with Jaws. We mentioned it last week. Well, last time we published an episode. And like now I have it to where I'm automatically put where I need to be to hit enter on download to download a link. And I think it's because I have some free time. I can actually spend the time customizing what I customizing Jaws or the setup that I have to make my life a lot easier, which... Should be useful when we go back to work. <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, I've been doing some of that myself too, uh, tweaking little things here. Uh, really getting into Reaper actually a lot. Um, you know, thanks to the free Cavi courses, I've learned a few tricks uh, that I did not know about that have made editing a hell of a lot faster. First of all, but yeah, just getting more comfortable in it, and honestly, actually understanding some of the. Uh, settings and where different settings are and how you can differently configure things so one example of a thing that i did like you mentioned that you have a project uh you probably mentioned this before we started recording you have a project specifically for dm show uh and i used to have project templates and my old installation of reaper uh on high sierra and mojave but i did actually kind of start from scratch with reaper and catalina so didn't have that set up, but what I have set up now is a couple of, uh, I have one default project template that I created uh, because of specific uh, setup that I'm running with my virtual mixer. I had to always make sure the master track was piping its audio to the right channels of that virtual mixer. Uh, and I got tired of changing it every time I went into the room <laughs> and would start trying yep. to play something and didn't hear anything. It's like, oh yeah, the master track got to change it. So I made a default template. Uh, save that as a template and then just set that as a default template. The other thing I've done is create a default, uh, create some track templates. I have a couple of track templates now. Uh, so yeah. I have one for me. So it makes sure it's pulling my audio uh, from the right channels of the virtual mixer. And also I have one set up for voiceover when I want to record an audio tutorial. So it's pulling that track is automatically uh, taking its input from the right channels of the virtual mixer. So, uh, Got into it a little bit, man. Like I said, the more I use Reaper, uh, I'll say, yeah, the more comfortable I get with it because I don't have to look up as many things as I used to. Mm -hmm. But also just the more powerful that I realize that it actually is. Like you can do a ton of stuff even if you're not musical. So uh, that's what I'm loving about it. Yeah, definitely. And and then what you can't do, you can make it so other apps can take advantage of the data that Reaper adds to files. And I'm thinking specifically of chaptering, uh, adding chapters to podcast episodes. People might notice that we started that with our previous episode, which I think was DM 45, wasn't it? Uh, yep. DM so now we're on DM 46. <laughs> yep. So you go to your own com slash DM four six for show notes and things mentioned and all of that great stuff. I did not get the Google doc that you mentioned yesterday oh and reaper i have set my recording to mm -hmm. uh flack uh so when i'm recording it's actually producing a flack file as it's saving it versus a wave file okay okay you know what now, it's actually good that i told you that so that when i send you a file you won't be like what the hell <laughs> <Black shit." laughs> now can you uh, when you export to flack does it give you the option to export markers as well uh Hmm, that I don't know because I haven't actually exported a file. Okay. Well, I take that back. I have exported a file, but I. But you've not it. paid that much attention to it. Yeah, I've actually yeah. just been like converting something I just recorded to MP3 or something, so I hadn't even paid attention. Yeah. Uh, if it doesn't, send me a WAV file. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was gonna say it will. It should. Yeah, it'll export me. It'll let me switch to like when I actually render the project out. You know, it'll let you switch to yep. a WAV file. That's actually still my default render is uh, a wave file you're system. just recording the flack yeah so okay say for some reason if reaper were to crash i hope you don't uh right now <laughs> that file would still exist again the advantages of a very well thought out 
dig digital audio workstation is that this file is going to be in my temp folder uh, yeah. until I save this project. So even if it crashes now, like I should not have lost everything. I would only lose everything after the crash, uh, which right. is nice. Uh, which again, you know, that's something I did not actually understand about this, uh, about Reaper until I started doing the uh, Reaper, what is it? Reaper basics or Reaper. Yeah, it's not the, it's so. whatever we'll the not, that DM 46. Yeah. Whatever the non-advanced version of that course is though, the, the, yep. the getting started part. Uh, you know, understanding that as it's recording, it's actually writing that file to, well, right now for me to my temp location because I have not saved mm -hmm. this project anywhere. Uh, so that file exists. So even if I were to goofily do, close Reaper, like stop recording, <laughs> quit Reaper, say don't save this project, well, the file still exists. Uh, it's just there's no project associated with it, but I can go get the file, which is, you know, it didn't cause me a whole bunch of problems at one point in time, but it's nice to know that, like that is a comforting yeah. level. Uh to be aware of so reaper is an awesome application uh, for sure especially when you take the the time to get to learn it and it's ins and outs because i used it for a year year and a half and just use basic features and then i re re-listened to the nudge dialogue uh, uh audio file and uh, i'm like oh yeah i can move it because of the comment that you made the other day i'm like oh yeah you can I can set cursor and, and move items. So fun tools, fun tools. Absolutely. And it does demonstrate the value of, you know, learning an application. Cause like you, I used it for like the first year and a half, probably almost two years with just the most basic of, uh, features, like just the most basic editing. I don't think I ever even was, was really recording into it. Uh, right. At all. Uh, you started doing that first. I was still older. Like, man, I got to have my audio hijack. I know how it works. <laughs> around. There's no bullshit with devices. It's just record it. Get it. All right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah I've, I've gotten, I mean, I've gotten to the point that I, you know, have recorded, uh, uh, you know, audio from different things. Like that's actually what I was doing to, to explain to you what I was actually attempting to do is I was testing out the source Nexus pro plugin. Mm, uh, mm -hmm. And what this plugin does, and it is a shame that it does not exist on windows. It really is. Uh, but what it allows you to do is it creates virtual devices, just like Loopback. Uh, that is the thing that they have in common. The things that they don't have in common is that source Nexus Source Nexus and Source Nexus Pro act as a plugin to your DAW. So okay. what I could do and what I did actually and what I was doing, which is why once I went and switched things up, I couldn't hear you anymore because you was going out, is I set up two different devices, uh, two different virtual devices. Uh, and one of them was Michael Speaks and one was Michael Hears. So uh -huh. the Michael Speaks became the output for Hangouts Meet, which is what we're using. And then on a track in Reaper, I added the effect of Source Nexus and I set the receive uh, to be Michael Speaks. So now it's routing Michael Michael's audio from the audio from Hangouts Meet into that track. Uh -huh. uh, and by arming the track and then turning on monitoring, I could hear Michael. Because I don't think you can hear a track if you're not armed. That's at least been kind of my experience. Yep. Uh, which thus means when I started recording, I was also recording Michael. <laughs> now, Michael was choppy. Why Michael was choppy, I don't know. Michael was coming in to me choppy. He's not choppy on his side, I'm certain. but Because you're not choppy yep. anymore either, Mike. Just, just to let you know. But he was coming in glitchy. And I was like, well, it's not going to do me any good to have Mike's audio if it's all glitchy. With little chops everywhere. So I was like, I need to undo this shit. But it did prove to me that what I was thinking could be done with that plugin could be done. And it's nice that it's an actual plugin versus, you know, something like Loopback, where in order for me to use Loopback uh, from Rogue Amoeba as a virtual mixing device, like I have to do some very, I basically have to treat it like it's an actual mixer once I built it. Like, yeah. you know, if I don't set Reaper's uh, master track so that I can hear uh, things to be a couple of channels that I can monitor from the mixer like I won't hear shit I won't hear a motherfucking thing if I don't set my input for a track to be one of the channels that has so for my microphone that's channels one and two if I don't set those as the input to a channel and reaper for this track 
If I don't set that track's input to be those two channels, it's not going to catch my microphone. I can arm it all day and hit record all day, and that's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was testing that out, and that's what you know was causing the glitchiness. Now that I have removed that, uh, there's no glitch, and I'm still recording. And thanks to the power of recording on both ends, the audience it doesn't matter. know any of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but just I, I I want to test these different things to see what's possible with routing audio around uh, in case we find ourselves in a situation where we do need to record an individual or individuals uh, locally yeah. for us because they're not going to get their recordings right. Uh, yeah, because that happens <laughs> all the time. You would not believe how often it happens. So I wanted to bring up something. We haven't talked about it because a lot of times we record our episodes ahead of time and then we eventually get around to editing it. It's my goal to get this turned around same day, but we'll actually see what happens. Okay, so two days after we recorded, not quite same day, but better than what it's been. I do want to mention just in case it's still available because I need to start doing more of it myself. The app Headspace is now offering a free year of their premium service, especially to those who are unemployed due to the COVID-19 situation. So if you go to headspace.com forward slash unemployed, you can uh, sign up for a free year of their premium service to be able to use it uh, and, and explore meditation during these times. Mike, tell people what Headspace is. It's a app that offers you meditation lessons. You can also get sleep cast. Would you say a meditation app? Would that would that sum it up? Yeah. All right. One password is also offering uh, six months for free before you have to start paying for it, but it is restricted uh, according to everything I can find uh, to one password for business. Uh, so if you are a business, and I think we mentioned this previously uh, in either DM44 or DM45 uh, that this is going on. That is still an active offer that is out there, but it is for business. So, you know, unless you're me uh, who does businessy things <laughs> just, just because I feel like I need to understand what's different about the business level versus the regular people level. Uh, or if you're an actual business that needs one password, like this is a great time to give it a try. Uh, you have six months free, which is very, very nice of them. I think this is where this conversation came up before. As I mentioned, like if you happen to be a one password user personally and you've been mm -hmm. trying to get your business to get on one password, here's a good time to wave that flag again because, you know, six months for free <laughs> is six months for free. Like, you know, it, 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 there's no if ands or buts about it if you get into it and a company decides they don't like it or they look at pricing structure and decide they, they can't afford it or don't want to pay for it uh you can always export your data uh, they do not lock your stuff down to the point that you can't get it out so uh great time to take a look at that uh and be mindful of the fact i'll just add this is that a lot of places are offering some type of COVID 19 response uh whether it's giving mm -hmm. you free service discounted services for example what we're using today to speak to each other me and michael that is uh is google meet uh google meet has made its features free to i believe everyone up until the yep, end of everyone September. with a google account uh, so even if you're not a G Suite customer, Google Meet used to be restricted to G Suite customers only. Now, everybody with a Google account can use Meet uh, up until the end of September. And Facebook, although I don't know how far that one's going to go. The Facebook rooms. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of you mentioned that to me the other day, Facebook rooms. Yep. Uh, they kind of went in one ear and came right out the other one. <laughs> Copy that. So, Demasi, uh, we've got an exciting event coming. We've got two exciting events coming up in June. I'm a little curious, the second to last line or the last line on this doc is what I'm asking you, what your hopes or wishes or thoughts are for iOS 14 uh, that should potentially be announced on June 23rd. Man, I'll tell you, there's a couple of things I'd like to see with iOS 14. One is I would like to see some move made towards allowing, allowing applications to 
hook into audio routing a little better on iOS. It doesn't have to be the full blown now Rogue Amoeba can make audio hijack for iOS, but I would like to see some sort of indication that there are, I know they have to be aware of this complaint from people, but that they're actually trying to do something to solve that problem. It could be a multi-year process. I'm totally fine with that, but I would like to see some sort of indication that they are interested in solving that problem on iOS. And I feel it's a problem that needs to be solved, not just for, you know, podcasters or people who want to record audio that are kind of on the edge edges of this. But if they're going to continue to push the iPad as a alternative computing device, meaning you can get an iPad and get all of the accessories that you want to go with it to make your computer your computer. Uh, I feel like that is a problem they have to solve uh, because people are going to inevitably want to record themselves on their device. You know, even if it's something as simple as a Zoom meeting, like I want to record this Zoom meeting locally, not to Zoom's cloud because, you know, Zoom gives me a limited amount of storage or whatever. So I would like to see moves toward that, first of all. Other things I'm looking forward to or hoping to see would be some deeper integration with shortcuts. Uh, I've been starting to build shortcuts again. Uh, I, I would like actual automation, like, you know, non-proactive, put, put up whatever, you know, permission dialogue you need to put up or warnings you need to put up and allow me to agree to, to the terms or whatever. But things that actually get triggered and run when I arrive at a location or at a certain time of day or, when the calendar is run, not just a notification that says, hey, you need to tap this in order to run this automation that you set up, but actually do it. So if I say when I'm recording DM show, I want you to automatically start a, you know, start my DM show timer that uh, puts in DM show and puts in recording because on the event it says DM show recording or it just says DM show, you know, more more hooks into things like that, actual true automation, as opposed to me having to interactively do something uh, a notification is you know a step but you know you could do that with launch center mm-hmm. pro years ago you know say hey when i get to this location remind you know i want to run this 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 automation or whatever with launch center pro and you would get a notification on your device you would tap it and the thing would run so i'd like to see that i can't think of anything else off the top of my head because honestly to be quite honest which i haven't really been thinking about iOS 14 too much here's what i want bug fixes stability let's get that yeah that's what i want actually <laughs> let's move that to the top of the list uh bug fixes stability yeah let's do that i would be perfectly fine as a matter of fact forget everything else i just said if all they got on the stage and said we spent all of our time that we could Uh, Even throughout this pandemic, refining and fixing and smoothing out the kinks and the bugs from iOS 13. Do exactly what they did in iOS 12, uh, which is just smoothed away. You know, make everybody else in the world think about it. Make tech people in the world think about it. It's like, hey, this is this isn't really iOS 14. This is like iOS 13.6 or something. You know, do that. Do that. Do that for Catalina as well. Uh, for for Mac OS as well, and I I would actually be happy with that. Uh, you ain't got to do nothing else. And then once you get a, a hammered out and smoothed out, then focus on audio routing. Yeah, and, and then, get then to the focus other on some of the other. Yeah, because look, if if you're gonna start doing audio routing, like look, take just give me an indication, right? Like just just some sort of indication is all I want when they get there. And again, that can be always fifteen. Uh, because that's <laughs> right? that's finicky, right? I can't have you screwing up my audio. Well, actually, there's audio problems already. So yeah, work out the bugs. That's all <laughs> I want. Never mind anything else I said. I don't care. Don't indicate anything. You ain't got to say nothing. Don't even wink. Just bug fixes. That's the one time you want to see an app update that says bug fixes. Yeah. No, that's all you got to even put on the slide at WWDC. I was 14. Bug fixes. All right. Everybody will clap. You will get a... Well, you won't actually hear because it it'll be virtual. But everybody will stand... Everybody will virtually clap you'll get zoom claps or or, or something i heard an interesting term that i had never considered before uh raise your zoom hand like right? because you know when we were doing b1 huh. we would tell people to raise their hand you know yeah uh raise your zoom hand uh but the reason that this i think this terminology came about is because they were also doing video so on some in, in certain situations they want you to actually raise your physical hand to get somebody's attention mm-hmm. uh but if you just had a you know question that you want to type in the, in the in the chat or something you know raise your zoom hand i was like huh interesting <laughs> interesting how things have shifted that was not a term yeah. before the pandemic 
A lot of things have changed with the pandemic. Android 11 is coming up. Uh, and I think, Mike, and you can confirm this for me because I was listening to all about Android, and I believe they mentioned mm-hmm. an Android 11 release day party stream thing going on. Uh, but that's coming pretty soon. So what? first of all, when is it expected that the announcement is going to be made, if you know? And then what are you looking forward to or wanting to see in Android 11. So on June 3rd, and we'll have a link at your own pay.com forward slash DM 46 for the announcement that they had. Google's going to be doing an event that's going to be announcing the Android 11 public beta. So, of course, I'll be trying that out. And uh, what I really want to see from them, and I suspect we're going to see it, hopefully, is two things number one the the ability to navigate the web a lot more consistently uh we talked about it on the last episode i think it was and that is you know we can navigate the web and i just learned something this weekend that if i flick down i'm cycling between headings links controls characters and words but if i'm anywhere else i can swipe down and be navigating between characters words lines etc when on the navigate uh, selector option in talkback and i at first uh, expressed my desire for it to automatically change uh to when i flick down once it go to headings and then come to find out when i actually stopped and paid attention uh, it does do it. that <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was about um, to send, I was about to reply to your email and tell you uh and reply. I hit reply all and I was actually typing. I was like, well, hold on, wait a minute. I haven't actually looked at that lately. Maybe they changed something in the update. <laughs> Let me go test that before I tell Mark, like, you know, it kind of already does that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it sure does. And if I would have been paying more attention, maybe I would have noticed that. But I don't know how long it's done that. And I've had touch and grow experiences with web although i will admit it's gotten a lot it's gotten a lot better over the last year i think because now i'll find myself jumping on the web to get stuff done on my phone and in the past i would wait to get things done until i could use a computer whereas with ios i typically just used uh the web as well so i i I would like to see a little bit more consistency with web browsing although we'll see where that goes and uh i want to see what type of of things Google decides to allow either their their developers or third party developers to do with some of the new accessibility uh, API calls that was uh, found in some of the development developer documentation earlier this month. Did you hear about those multi touch inputs? I did. Yeah, yeah. So uh, for those who don't know, you can flick with two fingers, left, right, up, and down, uh, two through four, all these you can't, well, one through four, you can double tap, triple tap, double tap and hold. Um, So it'll be interesting to see how much of those are usable and what you can actually do with those. Uh, Tasker comes to mind and some of the things you might be able to do with Tasker in those as well. Yeah, it would be also interesting just because I've seen this happen with Apple too. What actually makes it to release? Uh, yeah, as in, yeah. Uh, you know that that's I think two questions. What what makes it to release? Uh, and then what access do developers have? They may take the Apple route where we've introduced a bunch of new stuff this year, but we're the only people that can use it. And then next year, mm-hmm. developers get it, uh, or right. they may do the what I think of as the Google thing, which is oh yeah, it's out there. There you go have that yeah just just do it you do what you want with it (laughs) so that's what i'm interested to see and i kind of am curious about a 4a not really because we've got a 3 a 3a and a 4 but i'm i'm kind of curious about it i'd like to see what changes are made so this was actually prompted by your post inside of our uh the blind employment uh network Mm -hmm. Uh, asking people about are they working from home and what technologies have they found themselves using that uh, to to enable that process and it it kind of struck a chord with me which is you know what what are the things that you've been doing differently Uh, like what what app services tools that you have started to use in different ways since you've been at home or uh, what did you find yourself you know trying out what have you been trying out new since you've been at home 
uh, that weren't a part of your everyday workflow, you know, before uh, Reaper is an example of one of those things. I know for certain that we discussed earlier, like we've both gotten deeper into Reaper since this uh, pandemic started. But what else have you been kind of exploring? Flexible web with JAWS. I've mentioned it a couple times in a couple different episodes. Uh, being able to have that ability to quickly jump to different items. So, for example, if I go to a website and I log into a portal, I, I find a word which is like the word farm or the word market. And I uh, do a control F, find that word, and then I hit enter and it jumps me down to that section. And then I down arrow twice and I hit enter on, on a link to download a file, for example, right? Now what I've found myself doing is using flexible web starting reading at the first instance of that word so all i have to do is down arrow twice and i'm experimenting because the link does change on a regular basis so i'm experimenting to see if i can get it to jump me right to that link so i just have to hit enter to start downloading it but i'm not 100 percent sure if that'll work the other thing that i am haven't done yet but i need to explore uh further is hiding elements because uh, in that instance that I'm mentioning, sometimes there's two files you have to download on the same page. Mm -hmm. And it's set up the same way that you have to find different links on the page and then hit enter on those links. And those links typically have the same wording. So I'm going to, in the near future, experiment with hiding elements. But what I'm doing right now is the other thing that I have have a have only kind of played around with, and that is using the uh, place marker feature with JAWS. Instead of just setting a temporary place marker, which I've done forever for different things, I've set a place marker on that page that would jump me to the next link uh, that I need to hit enter on and download. So I'm envisioning right now what my workflow is, is I load the page, down arrow twice, hit enter, hit K, hit enter, because K will jump you to the next place marker. Eventually, I want to go to the page, hit enter, down arrow once, and hit enter because all the other elements are hidden. Uh, but that's that's one thing that I've played with is JAWS and, and getting more familiar with it. I did try out File Juggler. It did not turn out to be very accessible, uh, unfortunately. And then, yeah, that's, that's really what I've played with. I'm not happy that I'm not working, but I am happy that I have the time to actually spend to get to know more about my technology because I jumped from the Mac back in March of 2019 that I was using on a fairly regular basis into Windows full time. And it's 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 a bit of a change. Yeah. Uh, so having the time to actually sit down and learn the technology, because now I know I if I could automate this or I could get this done faster, then it would put me on a equal playing field with my colleagues although i will say one comment that i got from by coastal media quite a bit from either management or clients was man you're super fast at that because if they wanted to find a file i'd just go find the file real quick and not worry about scrolling through because i had an idea of what that client's folder started with or what the name of the file started with if that makes sense so i'd just type it in and it'd pop right up I'm going to tell you what I've mostly been doing because I was already doing all my work from home. So not much right. really changed for me in the sense of me being at home. But uh, there was an interesting little, little, uh, I think, very important piece of your question, which was since everyone is now at home, because now my daughter's at home all day. My son is at home all day. Tia's at home all day. Like they very rarely leave the house for anything uh, simply because like, you know, social distance. So. It's made me reevaluate a couple of things. Uh, one one thing that I have implemented that I wasn't really implementing all that much before the pandemic start is the closed door policy. If the door in the room that I'm working in is closed, do not come in unless it is a an, an emergency. There is something super important. If it's not, you know, hold it. Tell me later. Yeah. Write it down if you need to, but don't come interrupt me right. to ask me a simple question or something ridiculous someone has said on Facebook. If the door is open, it's perfectly fine to walk in at any time and say whatever you want to say. Because uh, if the door yeah. is closed, I'm focused. Like I'm either I'm doing one of three or four things. I'm either recording, I'm editing, or I am programming, right? Uh, I'm doing something that is intensive that requires my focus and you breaking my focus yep. is going to create a problem. Uh, so that's one thing that I've implemented. The other thing that I've done is I've started to kind of, and I'm going to drop a link to this YouTube video. Uh, 
in here. It was, very, it, it, it was interesting. I only saw it a couple of days ago, but I realized that I had started doing this very same thing. Uh, CPG Gray, I think is right. Maybe I have transposed some of those first letters. Uh, I had an interesting video called uh, Spaceship U. Uh, and this is a side note, Mike. I linked to that in uh, the general category and be in the uh, network also. He's talking about kind of like setting up workstations and making sure that while you're on lockdown, that you're doing things to uh, keep yourself healthy. You know, not just even even if you're fortunate enough or in a situation where you're able to work from home. So you're not, you know, not working. uh, You still need to think about your health and, you know, being mindful of things. Uh, So another thing that I had been doing was also kind of implementing spaces in my mind. Like if I'm in here at the desk, I'm working. if I'm in the living room, I'm engaging with the family, I'm engaging with the kids, you know, browsing YouTube, doing doing entertainment sort of stuff. Uh, you know, the kitchen, of course, for me has always been a only a eat only space. Uh, although my <laughs> recommendation to people, like if you do have to work at your kitchen table, just, you know, don't snack while you're eating. You know, keep your spaces yeah. separate in your mind, even if you can't separately do things in your home. And maybe Headspace will help you with that. That is a good with, point. With you know, maybe Headspace, you know, meditating and actually getting your mind clear so that you can focus and think on the things that you actually need to be concerned about. Like that could be, uh, Headspace could help with that. You know, go to headspace.com slash unemployed and check that out. It's interesting. I don't watch a lot of his videos, but I do watch some occasionally. And that one just has popped up to me too many times. I was like, I need to go look at this. Speaking of watching, uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with the Sonos Beam that we picked up uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, our TV does not support Atmos, I don't believe, and I don't think it has the HDMI arc uh, port that's necessary for the new Sonos soundbar. I forget the name of it off the top of my head, uh, but I'm pretty happy with it. It's kind of caused me to be a little addicted to netflix i've been watching some netflix shows and it's been taking a little bit of my productivity away so yeah be careful with that too i find myself reading a lot of audiobooks and oftentimes trying to read a book while i'm also supposed to be doing something else uh which is not Mm. good so again yeah be mindful of that but also be mindful of the fact that like sometimes if your brain is not in that work mode like don't force it like you can't force especially if you're in a space where what you're doing is creative in any sort of way yes you really cannot force that uh and i include that creativity just because i don't want to be left out of the creative bunch in trying to solve problems with wordpress like you have to think and if you can't Think Uh and focus on those things like you're not going to be able to figure out a solution to this problem. Editing audio, again, is another thing. What sounds good (laughs) and what doesn't sound good? Well, if your brain isn't focused on it, uh, you're going to leave mistakes or you're going to cut something or you're going to do weird stuff. Uh, Also, your brain won't be engaged with with the audio editor, so you won't be thinking of the shortcuts to save yourself time. So be mindful. And that is a part of mindfulness that I think a lot of people oftentimes overlook, which is. Uh, you need entertainment. Like entertainment is a thing that exists for a reason. Maybe your entertainment is Netflix. Maybe your entertainment is audio books and podcasts. Maybe your entertainment or your relaxation is, you know, sitting on your porch swing and listening to the birds chirp. I don't, right. you know, know. Or playing video games. Yeah, or playing video <laughs> games. But you do need that in your life. Like don't, don't, you know, and that's one of the pitfalls of people working from home all the time, especially if you run your own business is you're always constantly on the grind working and you don't set aside that time for yourself to relax and, you know, clear your brain like that. That was that relaxation time is important. Mindfulness is the word I could not think of when trying to explain headspace. That's all I really have right now. Do you have anything else you want to go over before we wrap it up? Allison's done 15 years of podcasting. Makes me feel like we need to get out there and get more shit done. Man, congratulations. Look, not only 15 years, but consistently 15 years yes. without missing a week. Uh, yep. You know, she. That's good. That That is spectacular. Uh, and I, I commend her for that simply because even. On the times where she could not do her show, she has, you know, built up enough good relationships and enough trust in people, frankly, to allow them to step in and guest host her show so that that publication continues to happen. Uh, 
that that is what is truly amazing about that is that she's made sure it's not been a week without a no silicast published uh so congrats to her for that yeah we well man we can't speed up time so it's, <laughs> we can't speed time up we're like oh yeah we've been doing it 25 years like man oh, we just gotta wait and keep plugging away man keep get more consistent that's the thing that we need to do with our show uh yeah Sometimes I think we need to be more, I'm going to be honest, sometimes I feel like we need to be more consistent. Uh, and then sometimes I'm like, eh, you know, whatever. This is the show. Like, it comes out when it comes out. There's no schedule. Uh, it just comes out when it comes out. That's why you stay subscribed to uh, <laughs> Steel Allison's uh, off-use phrase. You know, that's why you stay subscribed because the show comes out when the show comes out. If you like the show, you'll stay subscribed so you get the next one when it comes out. Uh, we'll try not to leave so many gaps there, though. That that you no, know, we can yeah. tighten those gaps, yeah. and up that's a one of the bit. reasons why I want to push this editing through and and get it done because that's our that's our holdup. Either you or I will get busy doing something else, and then it's like, oh yeah, we need to edit DM forty two or forty six or whatever Man. at your own pay dot com forward slash DM forty six. I did just put a link in the Google Doc that is to Allison's fifteen year anniversary. Now, one thing that I I'm gonna this is a spoiler alert, so if you haven't heard it, plug your ears. But one thing that Steve, her husband, does is one of the last testimonials is him going back and showing the progression of Allison's podcast since 2005 and, and some of the ways that she's changed her intro. And uh, like the the current intro that she has, she didn't get to until uh, 2017. So 12 years into podcasting every week. And it took her to figure out where she's at, which tells me as someone who is helping other people create create podcasts that you can start your show now and start your podcast now and it's going to evolve and just realize that and as long as you get comfortable with that and you start producing content you'll eventually find your stride figure out what you want to podcast about but of course it's good to have an, a, a target audience and someone who you can be helping with your podcast but if not and you like to record and that's the way you produce content best get out there and do it because sometimes your podcast changes yeah. drastically I mean, it is going to change some way somehow like some people have kept their format like what they're you know like for Allison, for example the, the, the gist of her show what her show is overall about has, has not really changed the way no. she delivers that content the way she goes about producing that content has changed over the years naturally same thing right. with mac geek gap which is another extremely long-running show uh, in the podcast space, like their 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 show format has not really changed. Well, actually, I think Dave mentioned like when they first started, it started out one way, uh, and they just had a section for questions, and then that just you know grew until the show became questions and tips. Now it's like questions, tips, and little short discussions on things. Uh, but that evolved, you know, from from where they started, but not not too much, and especially over the past ten, fifteen, you know, ten years for them. Uh, you know, their show has been what their show has been. Things have changed. You know, the production of their show has changed, the way that they record their show, the way that they publish, the way that they get content for their show has changed. But the overall purpose of their show has not changed. So as Mike said, like one of the most important things, it, it is nice to have an idea in mind of what you want your show to be about. Uh, for example, when me and Mike started recording, like we wanted to talk about the technology and the tools and the things that we were doing in our lives, uh, because we would oftentimes find ourselves on the phone having these discussions like, you know, this really could have been a podcast. That has changed from when we started, because at that point we were both working from home and we, I don't even know, we hadn't even started blind employment solutions. Nope. So a lot of our workflows have changed over the years and that's changed the, the conversation that we're having as well. Just realize that things are going to change. Yeah. Things, uh, I mean, things I have to, to change. Like you have to change. Matt Geekga recently went to doing video, uh, mm -hmm. as well as audio, but they're yeah. still mindful of the fact that their audience is audio. Like they're doing video just as a thing to try out. Like you know, we've been doing this this way this long. We figured all this out. Let's try some video stuff because they're they're wanting right. to do more more media. Uh, more sharing of clips and things of that nature. So having video means it makes it you know more relevant to post a clip about this this super amazing quick tip on mac os to youtube or to facebook 
uh, and have people be able to see them as opposed to it just being a waveform or just a static image, which is what I would do because I'm lazy. But yeah, your show is going to change. It, it has to change. It has to evolve. Me and Mike's show is still evolving. Like, it, it is still yep. you know, changing because we, <laughs> I remember me recording on, yeah, the ear pods. I remember recording on those and then. I got my first ATR twenty one hundred with Demosti, and like the sound quality was a uh, night and day. And now I'm I'm hanging out with the cool kids and recording a podcast from a closet with clothes in the room because I realized that that's going to dampen some of the sound. And hopefully the the evolution between what our audio started back in DM one to what we're at at Whoa, DM forty six has, has evolved. Yeah, it has a bad. <laughs> Look, I think our first couple yeah. of shows was done on Ringer. Uh, getting the junk out of the way, getting the junk out of the way and getting back to what you need to do. And yeah, yeah, they were, I think I even had to do one show from my phone. So I was actually using the ringer app. Uh, wait, ringer was just mobile only at the time. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yep. So we did all yep. our shows from the phone and I think I got the idea <laughs> one time like, Oh, I just got Mike. I just got this lightning, uh, connect camera connection kit. It's got a USB port on. It. I'm just going to plug my mic in and see how it works. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is changing. It's going to change. Like, you know, we still figure out, you know, what it is we want to talk about. Uh, I think the overall sometimes while we're talking about yeah, it, I think the overall <laughs> gist of our show is not going to change, which is basically just me and Michael sitting down and kind of shooting the shit, going over what what we've you know been doing, what we're thinking about, what we're interested in. Sometimes what's annoying us, you know, well me anyway. Uh, Mike very <laughs> rarely has those rants. It's more me that goes on the rants, but uh, it, it the for I think the format of the show has changed and probably will change again at some point in the future. But the overall point of why this show exists for us is you know just what it is it's the dm show it's the Masi and michael show because we get together yeah. and we chat about whatever the hell we could think of to chat about sometimes we remember the thing sometimes we write it down sometimes like mike said we make it up as we go and on that note i don't really have anything else to talk about for this episode do you you can follow him on twitter at payon p-a-y-o-w-n you can mention me on Twitter. I'm at Damasi, D-A-M-A-S-H-E. Remember, your own com slash DM46 for this episode's show notes. Catch you guys next time. You've been listening to Your Own Pay Podcast. If you've enjoyed today's episode, visit yourownpay.com slash cast for exclusive content. And to contact us today. We're eager to hear your thoughts and about how you're making this podcast your own. Thanks for listening. We'll be back soon. The Your Own Pay Podcast, yourownpay.com.